And the other than that, it's really dealer's choice what you want to own. I want to own U.S. assets uh, for this coming um, collapse in world trade because I know I'd rather fight in my market's judicial system than try to fight in Mexico's or Indonesia's or or other places. And Canada's close enough. Canada knows that um, Trudeau aside is it such a big employer of their of their economy, energy and mining and minerals that they can't afford to be um, myopic about it or cavalier about it. So I think they'll protect property rights in both those countries. And good afternoon, everyone. Today with me, Bob Kudla, TradeLikeAGenius.com. Now, last month, we were talking about indicators of energy, and that would be a huge catalyst for movement in markets and our daily lives and how that everything that is we see in the world right now as an event is going to affect us moving into this last quarter here of 2022. We just saw the oil cuts. 2 million barrels a day, but is it really two or is it more really taken off the shelf one? And uh, to clue us in on how energy prices are going to be moving forward and how that might affect all of us. Hyperinflation, inflation, deflation, where does it go from here? I'm really curious myself because Bob's had his finger on the pulse for such a long time. And things foretold in the beginning of the year are now coming home to roost. So, you know, if you'd watched any of our interviews at the beginning of the year talking about the fertilizer debacle, the whole energy debacle, how this was going to work in tandem with food, energy, and economy. And then the downward spiral as the unaffordability would move into play. And we seem that we found ourselves right here. So how do we protect ourselves? Well, you know, I'm getting a lot of wind over in the EU's of copper production shutting down, et cetera. So I'm just curious, like on a weight basis, how much effect in Europe uh, having the economy stop on a dime or contract 50 percent or so? Uh, how does that kind of drip feed over into here and then have some uh, effects in our economy or production levels of, you know, base metals and that sort of thing? And then the other question is. How much need is there really going to be overall moving into this uh, renewable economy? I mean, how many years of mining will it take to actually facilitate digging, processing, refining all the metals that we need to really transition into this supposed World Economic Forum utopia of everything running on wind power, or whatever kind of power it might be? So, you know, we've got these two things in play here exactly at the same time, and they kind of overlap. Yeah, you know, uh, with Europe, it's interesting is, you know, they don't, they don't, they mine very little in Europe. I think Spain does some mining. Other countries have stuff here and there, um, but they're just not able to produce it because, you know, cost of energy is too high. So they're shutting their facilities down, but it's just being produced somewhere else. So, um, you know, even though we may go into recessions here, there's just not enough production around the world. They've suppressed it through financial, you know, chicanery. And now, you know, basically it's the revenge of the nerds on the commodity side. They're, they're, they're uh, t- basically saying, hey, uh, there's not enough supply. You're going to have to pay up. And that's just going to be the breaks. And, you know, we're, we're going to have to deal with that. But copper is also in deficit, too. So really everything's in deficit. There's nothing that's abundant right now. And so you're, you're going to have to pay up for it all. And now, having said that, I'm talking next three to five years, I think, I think we'll probably see doubles in everything I showed you minimum, okay? Which is, um, you know, hey, 30, 40% a year returns for those metals. If you just want to just lock them away and come back in, you know, three or four years and see how you've done. And um, one thing I didn't show you was 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 natural gas. So uh, uh, I have a 21-year-old daughter and she's knee deep in that gas. So I just said, hey, she goes, Dad, what do you think for the next 18 months? Where should I put my dough? I said, put it in natural gas because, uh, you know, there's, that's a reverse problem, right? They can't produce it in, in, the, in the European Union. So they're, they're buying it from us and they're buying it from the uh, Middle East. And, and there's, you know, there, there's a shipper that we own that ships natural gas. There's a, there's a compression company that, that provides infrastructure, natural gas. And then there's, there's natural gas direct play like Southwest Energy, 
And then there's uh, companies like ethanol company I have her in. Um, no, no price risk, but GPP, great company, great dividend. So, so you know, she she's at a point now where she still needs some cash to because uh, she's starting out in life. So that's going to provide her some uh, some income, but at the same time, her portfolio is going to grow. And then once her salary blends into her living expenses, then you know we can go full on some longer term stuff with her. So. But yeah, and in my personal portfolio, everything I showed you there, I own in one way, shape, or form. I might be in and out of those, you know, for a couple of days or weeks at a time. But essentially, uh, I've owned and traded all of those in the last three months, and I'm primarily in them. And I'm mostly, I'm mostly heavy weighted energy. The metals themselves, like Europe and stuff like that, um, you know, if they can't produce it, somebody else is producing it. Steel stocks have been doing great of late too. So I think what's going to happen is these federal reserves around the world, they're going to have to blink and they're going to have to, they're going to do what are called invest. And I think that's what you're going to find. Uh, uh, you're going to find all these metals just continue to drive higher because they can't balance the budget. So they're hard assets. So they'll, they'll move with the debasement. Of the but here's the one that I like the most. So, um, uh, I'm gonna. I'm, I like to buy American silver. This is a pure play American silver miner. Hey, it doesn't look very differently than silver. So, um, but it's been swinging up nicely back and forth. Okay, and so I own this long term. I don't. I don't trade Hecla. I'm expecting Hecla to break out with silver, and and so that's a good one to own uh, on the um, on the uranium front, which is you know. I consider that mining because you're mining uranium. Uh, CCJ is my favorite. Obviously, it's a Canadian company. Um, it's in a really good position. It's back to it's back to risk on. Uh, we've had some um, we had some really interesting moves here uh, that you know pointing out some other trades that we've done. This breakout here, uh, this is the cup and handle breakout. Okay, it successfully tested it. Okay. It always tests the breakout that's successfully done it. Now we're looking at um, next move for uranium at $35 and 36 cents. Now American purebred American one is quad U, which is U, 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 U. Okay. Um, so I wouldn't worry about this being a head and shoulders. This has basically been in a range for um, all of summer into, you know, this week here. But I started buying this thing. It was two fifty a share. I sold it at eleven. I bought it back in at six dollars a share, and I'm looking for this thing to break the range. And once uranium really starts to go, go to about twenty bucks. And that people trading UEC is doing fantastic. I don't own UEC, but that's another one that you can think about owning. And then when you move from from the silver side, is that on the gold side? I um, I like Barrick Gold. Okay. Barrick gold washed out, guys. Okay. You want to talk about a stock that you don't have to worry about it getting blown up on you? It is dumped. And so this this is putting in, you know, some really nice bottoming moves here. This move here on on um, I guess this is Tuesday, uh, made a new a higher high for a change. Okay, this is important. Breaks over 1675. Barrick gold is gonna make a move. And other than that, it's really dealer's choice what you want to own. I want to own U.S. assets uh, for this coming um, collapse in world trade because I know I'd rather fight in my market's judicial system than try to fight in Mexico's or Indonesia's or or other places. And Canada's close enough. Canada knows that um, Trudeau aside is it's such a big employer of their of their economy, energy, and mining and minerals that they can't afford to be um, myopic about it or cavalier about it. So I think they'll protect property rights in both those countries. Australia probably too, but many don't list on the, they mostly list on the Aussie exchange. So I focus on America and Canada for myself personally. Um, yeah, nice so W next, pattern setting up there too. You know, that's a classic yeah, W right there. Yeah, absolutely. It's setting up really nicely and just be patient with these is, you know, um, you know, none of that, no, no laser eyes on this stuff. This is going to be, when this happens, it's just going to grind and grind and grind and grind and grind. 
and uh, people will, will love it. Um, so speaking of minerals, this is the one you need to live on. Um, this is mosaic. Yeah, mosaic. Yeah, how would it, let me come back to you for a second. So mosaic, you know, being down in Florida and whatnot for so really what's going to be happening with it? Because I've had a couple people ask me about fertilizer production just as a general quote unquote fertilizer across the planet, and then you can break it down into the phosphates, into the urea, and the nitrogen components and whatnot. So what are they going to be able to continue production levels after that hurricane? Oh, well, eventually, soon, soon enough for you to not worry about it if you're holding it for more than a week, okay? Okay, so that's a great more, answer. Yeah, Mosaic is, uh, remember, their phosphate mines are in Florida, but but they're, um, they're um, I mean, their phosphor, yeah, phosphorus mines are in Florida, but their mm -hmm. uh, potash mines are not. They're in Canada, okay? And so, you know, they'll... You know, soon enough, I don't know if those mines got saturated with water, but they'll pump that stuff out soon enough in, in Florida. And uh, IPI is the one that's actually has more of a risk in Florida because uh, they're uh, they have uh, big mines. I think their headquarters is in Tampa, by the way. Mosaic's headquarters, I think, is in, is, uh, not, is in Canada, but I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure Intrepid's in, is, is in Tampa. And, um, uh, but you can look that up. You can correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, so um, we're still have a shortage here, right? Believe it or not, North America has enough uh, mineral assets for ag chem. Okay, between Canada and the United States, out in the western, um, out in Utah and Colorado and Montana, you know, there's we have people have to understand how how these minerals form. This, these are mineralizations when the uh, either through volcanic activity or what they call stretching of the plates. And if anybody's been out west of the Rockies towards California, you'll, you'll understand the basin and range, right, phenomenon. Those things, you mineralize silver, you mineralize gold, mineralize copper. Uh, same with uh, potassium. Uh, basically, that's, it, it's, it's, you know, that water gets is steamed up. And what they've, what they've done is if it gets trapped underneath the salt dome, and it can mineralize. You can mine it, but if, even if it doesn't get trapped under into under a, a salt dome, you um, you can just go ahead. And what they've done with with uh, with potash is they just go ahead and they stick a, a straw on the ground. They pump it up into beds and let it um, let it um, desalinate, and then it, they you, you know you can right off the it's basically right off the Colorado River in Utah. They they have these massive massive uh, salt ponds. Where they're they're, uh, they're harvesting potash, and look, if you guys want to trade with us, just you know, we have a million ideas. We have trades every day, so if you want to trade with us, go to tradelikeagenius.com. Like I said, our track record is you know we win two out of three trades. Remember, we're not an advisory service; we're an education service, so we'll teach you how to trade. Uh, we throw trades out every day, so you, to prove our model, so you can see that it works take those trades, um, you'll make money from them. And, and we also will give you access to our algorithms. So everyone but the Fed liquidity one, um, we, um, uh, that one's private and we actually have a, we don't give you the indicator, but we actually give you the, the, uh, the list of the stocks hitting those arrows that I, those triangles I talked about. So you have to say to take advantage of these, these discounts. 65% off stuff that's bundled, non-bundled items are, are you have the promo code, you put it down below. I think Columbus, Columbus for 40% off. 40% off. And, and uh, we trade crypto, we trade stock, we trade uh, the futures and the options market. So we can help you navigate everything. Uh, Phil, my partner in crypto, look, he knows, how to, he knows how to swing you back and forth, long and short on those things. Tells you when it's safe and not safe to be in the alt world. And then what alts are moving. So it's a really good program. Even if Bitcoin does nothing, as long as it moves, you know, back and forth, we'll make money from it. And then, you know, you have a company, you know, other companies like Western Uranium, Vanadium is another account stock we own. Okay. Because um, Vanadium, this is also produced in the United States. Very few um, uh, Vanadium mines that are, that are, strategic metals in the United States, okay? 
I'm just trying to give you guys some trades here to, you know, think about. Not, these aren't really trades. These are holds. Okay, here's rare earth, right? This is really nice. See, right now here, um, I love this, this chart, okay? So we had a breakup of the moving VWAP, and today we had follow through. So I'm likely to go ahead and buy um, going into tomorrow if we have another follow through by MP. Uh, for for a move from basically 31 up to 34 dollars okay and so i'm going to keep an eye on that i'll step down to the four hour and uh, if you notice here um you know bottomed out at 26 i was on vacation all last two weeks so i i wasn't really trading so um this would have got my attention but now what i'm most interested in is it breaking this four hour ranger we call it range trader and we flip this thing and then we start making a move, look for this pivot back up to 38 bucks. But these are mines, rare earth mines out of Nevada. Okay, they process these, these minerals in Texas now. So it's becoming a US based thing. So very important uh, mineral for you to own. Here's a Can another Canadian company um, that's starting to make a move right now. This is a uh, Canadian silver and cobalt. I own this one as well. And this chart's setting up beautifully, okay? Uh, it's a penny stock, but again, uh, a North American-based cobalt producer. Okay, you want to own it. And then in copper side, believe it or not, I looked at a lot of small ones. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot out there. But of the five biggest copper mines in the United States are owned by Freeport McMoran. Okay, so it's flashing some cells here. On the four hour, just because it's hitting resistance, the last time it hit resistance, it sold back down. So this trades really nice with our system, okay? So now I have to respect this sell on this, okay? I own I own um, FCX out into some January calls. I've been trading in and out of some solds on it. But I expect at some point, whenever you see two sell signals like this, this first one failed and it pushed up into resistance, my expectation here is that when this range breaks, then I start looking for new highs on it. And so just keep an eye on, on FCX as well. And then the last area I'll show you guys that's important is uh, lithium. And LAC is an American-based miner, okay? And it's also um, been in just a chop zone, okay? And so, again, when you have a sell signal that fails... Uh, that you get your attention. And now we have a second one. And and so we may be in a position here where we're starting to change um, the character on, on lithium. So I don't short these stocks. I just look for I just look for uh, then the buy. The only thing I short is uh, uh, I short Apple and I'll short Spy. And I, I stay away from everything else on the short side. I'll buy Sark. I'll buy SDS. I'll buy those companies, but mostly I'm looking for I'm looking for blue arrows to buy. Okay. And the deeper this the deeper the sell-off, the more likely it is I'm going to take the trade. Okay. And then and get get these these impulses higher and then hop off the trade. So with that, I'll stop the charts, Dave. I thought it'd be good instead of just me just rambling on about stuff um, that most of your audience probably agrees with me already. I just thought to show them that that these these stocks are all in prime position to uh, pay us over the next couple of years. Yeah, but that overbought position there, those red huge triangles above what above eighty on that, so clean to see as well. Yeah, and it doesn't necessarily mean short. It means if you're long it, you should be moving your stop up. All that's telling me is that the easy money's out of that trade, and sometimes you get that trade will hit and the moves is that it's failure point anyway. And look, if you're hundred percent right, you know, we're right two out of three times. That's pretty darn good. But if we were right hundred percent of the time, it would be called collecting, not trading. And you wouldn't, you wouldn't need me. <laughs> so get the algo, get out of the way, Bob. <laughs> hey, yeah. you, you hit me. Hey, yeah. One last question. Or what, now you talked about average price of oil, you know, next year being 110 and then the year after being 130. Now, do you think we're going to see any, uh, I wouldn't really call it a mega spike, but, you know, 
large spikes that are far outside the norm in that time? Or is it just going to baseline through there and slowly creep up? Or we might get a couple uh, jumps unexpectedly through that time. Yeah, so oil tends to be very spiky for being one of the most liquid markets in the world. It's very political. So yeah, we'll get spike moves, but the general direction of oil will be up. Look, if I was a politician and that was the tool in my tool shed to get reelected or my people reelected, I would have done that too. But from a strategic standpoint, the reason why they call it strategic petroleum reserve, not the politician's petroleum reserve, is because they want you to keep away from it until we have a general emergency. But you know, I think now uh, we're going to have to put more drilling in the ground. If you notice, Schlumberger and Devon Energy were rocketing today because I think there's a realization we got to increase production outside of OPEC to be able to um, keep these prices in check. Eventually, they'll catch back up again. But yeah, it's going to be spiky. And look, we don't know the geopolitical world, right? You know, we don't know what um, you know what's up with Putin. We don't know what's up with Zelensky. You know. Um, you know, I'm not so much worried about China slash China, Taiwan, because there's no real strategic asset there in terms of oil. There is if you think in terms of chips and chip production, but that's a story for another day. But the real area you got to watch is what's going on in the Middle East and what's going on in in uh, in in Western Africa and what's going on in the United States. So, you know, we're 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 the three regions that are driving the price of energy, and then of course. Russia, what does Russia decide to do? Look, he may pull in his horns and you can have 135 oil in a week. Okay. So he kind of controls it all and he's the marginal producer and we gave away that right. It's not a good right to give away. The politicians reserve the P, well, that PPR instead of SPR. Yeah. I'm calling that BS. That's a BS reserve right there. That's for sure. That was yeah, a joke so, for everybody. Ha ha ha. You need to laugh if you're at home listening <laughs> to this. The politician petroleum reserve. Look, they, I, I say in half jest, they're talking about trying to use that reserve and actually trading off it and making money and putting it more into res, in the recyclable, I mean, not recyclable, renewable stuff, but they're crazy. You know, look, I own a solar energy company. I am pro renewable. I'm not against it. I'm just, I'm just into smart investing into our future and and let that technology catch up to the infrastructure and let the infrastructure catch up to the you know to the people and and people will naturally gravitate to what's better but you know you're trying to put a gun to people's heads and make things very inconvenient you're gonna have a hard time getting the uh the penetration that you want short term and that's it i think they just think we're idiots and we'll just do whatever they tell us to do but you know we're looking at probably 30, 35 years before you see anything meaningful from the transportation system being on renewables. I don't care. I don't care what they tell you. There's too much money out there to be made in the non-renewable world that people are going to easily give that up just because, you know, you know 20 or 30 really woke politicians are driving the, the narrative. Not going to happen. But that's pretty much all I really have today, Dave. I'm, uh, if you don't, if you can't tell, I'm a little wiped out, but I hope people, um, Appreciate the charts. Um, tremendous opportunity in front of us. Don't be afraid of this. Um, I think we'll get back onto our global minimums. I think we have some CMEs coming our way. So um, they might be passed before next time we talk. But um, Jupiter's in alignment here. I guess the pull's greatest right now. So there's a lot of a lot of fun things. And I think uh, this La Nina that we're going to get this year is going to be a wet one. So I think we're transitioning out west. So uh, uh, a lot of fun stuff to talk about going forward. So, but thanks for listening. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks everybody. And also add in the volcanic winter in the Southern hemisphere. But until we speak next time, links will be below in the description box for everything we talked about tonight, click and go. And Bob, appreciate your advice and knowledge. And it helps me, uh, you know, put things a little bit more straight in my head when I'm trying to explain. So until next month, thanks for everybody. And also bye for now.